Hello and welcome to another book review video. Today we will be discussing Ghost Tamer by Meredith Lyons. Now if you don't like negative reviews or if you think that reviews that or reviews that are say under three stars shouldn't be published or shouldn't be promoted or just shouldn't be gone into, you should just read them and put them to one side then this will not be a video that will be fun for you. Because I'm going to say it right off the bat. I did not enjoy this. There are things I have thoughts about this book. But let's begin at the beginning. So I got this book in the October Twisted Retreat Horror Box at about the end of last year. And yes, I know it's been over six months since I got this, to get in around to reading it. It's been a while. I was, it came out of my TBR jar. I read it in an afternoon. It's been nice weather, at least at the weekends. That's when I read this thing. I hadn't heard of it when it came out. I hadn't heard anything to do with it. I didn't even know it existed until I got the box and pulled it out. So, let's get into a little bit of the synopsis for this one. So, our main character is Rayleigh and, and the story outline is that Rayleigh and her best friend Joe are travelling back from a comedic stand-up set. They're just starting out, they're doing little sets at the place where Rayleigh works. They almost miss their train and they have to sprint to catch it and they only just make it on board. Think sliding doors, if you watch that movie. They're sat at the front in the very front car which is where Rayleigh likes to sit because she can look out the train driver's window to see what's coming. I don't know what kind of train they're on because in the UK that isn't a thing. Now as they're talking um, and Rayleigh's watching out of this front window, she notices that there is a bend coming up in the tracks and the train isn't slowing down as it should be. It's going way too fast to make the bend at all safely. Now they and everyone else in the car can only watch in slow-mo horror at this bend coming up and the train ends up going off the rails and crashes. Now really is trapped, she is disorientated and she sort of blearily sees somebody, they grab her and drag her out of this crushed up train car and into the snow beyond and leave her there. She doesn't see their face, she doesn't really, she doesn't recognise them, she doesn't recognise their voice, she just gets grabbed and chucked outside in the snow. Now from pitch, this is all like in the first couple of chapters so this isn't really a spoiler, but when they're going through the aftermath and the pictures of the accident after afterwards and like crime scene photos, because really is insistent that somebody dragged her from the car and as a reader we know somebody dragged her from the car. But from pictures of the scene, um, because she's in the snow of course, there's no footprints around her and it's been snowing for days so there would have been. There's no footprints around her. The snow is undisturbed. There's nothing wrong with it. And suddenly really finds that she can see ghosts. And not only can she see ghosts, she can interact with them and they interact with her. Kind of like Ghost Whisperer probably. Um, but of course not all the ghosts have good intentions and a dark force is stalking her and is fixated on devouring her soul. Really has to work with her ghostly tagalong called Casper. Really? One of the many eye rolls in this is used to just why? I get it, it's a ghost name. Can't you think of another one, really? And a psychic to understand her new gift and how to stop this dark force from possessing her soul. So based on that sort of synopsis and the first couple of chapters, I was in. Because it sounds like something that I would really be into. Ghosts, souls, devouring dark forces, you know, crashes, a ghostly, you know, tag along. We'll get there, because the synopsis is the only good thing about this, and the way it looks. Because this is beacon of the way it looks. It is a subscription box 
book. It is a special edition and you can, I'll just put this microphone down there. Um, because one of the things about the some of the Twisted Retreat books is that the cover, so the cover of this book is this one, but it is reversible. So like I have it on this side just because I like it better and the other side is this. So it has more of the train etc on it. But yeah, I prefer this side to that one just because I found the train a bit boring it only you know although yeah it is the catalyst for all the events and I just I prefer the matte cover rather than the shiny shiny one now as I said and I hate I hate this I hate the naked hard cover I, I, I just don't like it it doesn't it doesn't vibe it doesn't vibe for me it, it it's trying to be something it doesn't end up being. And I don't like it because it tries to be that. And it's the same on the back. Th this, this, it doesn't even come into it. There's, there's nothing like this in this book. It doesn't happen. Um, the sprayed edges are just this like wavy blue sort of, I'm guessing, smoke, but there's no smoke in this book, and it's not blue, but there's no, like, blue, smoky, aura, whatever's in this book, so I don't know where they got that from, so I, I, I just don't get it. And the end papers are, again, this sort of blue, I mean, it rocks, but this doesn't get described. It's the same on the back. It doesn't get described in the book. It, it It's just not there. It annoys me something awful. And it is a tw it is a box. Uh, it, is, it is a signed. I like this cover. I thought it was going to be something more. Now, as you can probably tell from the vibe I'm giving off, I didn't like it all that much. And I have quite a few sort of buggy niggles with this book. So the main character really, as I said, as you find out in the synopsis and as you find out in the first couple of chapters, has been in her, has been in a horrific, horrific train derailment crash where she is the only survivor of this packed out train. And she, of course, she nearly dies. And yet, is back at work within two weeks with only a limp to show for herself. Now, I get that um, it is set in America. I get that, I think it's set in Chicago. Now, I get that um, healthcare is expensive in America, but when you're the only survivor of a train crash, it's unlikely that you're going to be back at work with only a limp in two weeks just to I, it, it's a little thing but it annoys me it doesn't make sense to me because there's absolutely no recovery process that would make this believable and i'm not getting that the it's been done in other books so why wasn't it was just like a, a switch so she's gone on this train crash and she's in the hospital and you know she's hooked up to all these machines and then it switches to where she's going to work. Make it make sense. And also, another niggle is this train derailment, this train crash, it's such a big catalyst. It's the catalyst for the whole book. And we get it in step by step, slow motion. It is well written, that part. And go through all of this, we get no conclusion as to why the train crashed. Why the driver didn't slow it down. Even not like a throwaway sentence that he was suicidal and wanted to off himself at work. You know, like a newspaper article saying that. You get no conclusion to this accident at all in any way, shape or form. It annoys me. It annoyed me. Because I thought that because it was such a big thing and it's, I mean, it's on the front cover, the other side of it. I thought it would be such a big thing that it 
would be woven throughout this story, you know, the ripples in the pool, it would just go out and get bigger and bigger. And I thought that this, you know, this big bad spirit that wants to devour her soul would have had something to do with his train crash, whether it possessed the driver to eat all the souls on board, kind of like, kind of like ghost ship. But no, after the initial chapter of the actual crash, we get nothing. Nothing. We get nothing. Nothing. We barely get a mention of this cataclysmic event in her life. We get now. As you can tell, it annoyed me. If you've seen some of my other reviews, the most heinous thing uh, an author can do is to make a character boring. And this one did not only just make one character boring, all of them are boring and tedious. And this is a book that is, you know, about ghosts. You know, you d ghosts that are after your soul, devouring, you know, evil entities. And they're boring and dull and tedious to read. And it got to halfway through. I mean, it is only a little book. I mean, look at the size of it. It's only a little thing. It's 305 pages. It's only a little thing. And it got to, I got to halfway and I actually thought about DNFing it because... Nothing was happening. And when I mean not, I was reading filler. This book is filler, apart from the first and the last chapter. And I, yes, I, I suppose that could be the same for any book, but at least other books have something happening. This did not. And I, I got like, I got halfway through and I realised that they'd not done anything. There was a hell of a lot of talking and nothing being done and they were just repeating not only the talking over and over again but what they were doing they would have a confrontation with this entity that would be violent and then nothing happened and then they would have the same confrontation with the same entity and nothing happened nothing came of it Nothing. There were no stakes. There was nothing. It was boring. Sometimes I guess um, stories when I'm reading, um, some of them I guess completely wrong and I'm surprised. With this, I guess the outcome after the first five chapters, I was like this far into it, this far into it. When I guessed what happened for all this, it's and it's not just because I'm so so clever. It's because it was easy. It is so easily worked out. It's practically slapping the reader in the face for the first couple of chapters and saying, "Oh, look at me." It no. No. It's not suspenseful. It's not a twist if it's been I mean, it can be a twist if it's been done a million times before. But in the same exact way, it's not a twist. It's just copying. And it makes... When a story is so easy to work out that this, it makes your main character go down a few pegs in the, you know, brains department. Because as a reader, you're constantly waiting for really to catch up to what you've read. And you're only in her head. It is only her POV you've got so it's like you it's not like you've got outside influences knowing what's going on you know like Columbo did you're in her head and you're screaming how can she be so stupid not to know what's going on and the other characters the like side characters they're laying this story out on a golden platter for her to understand and she doesn't get it she doesn't get it till the end so you have to struggle through all this to the end for her to actually go huh <sighs> just fucking bury me I'll become a ghost for reading this and it's just so the twists the turns the big reveals are just so blatantly obvious it's painful it's painful 
And the big thing about this is all the ghosts that turn up that she can suddenly see and interact with and speak with. And I would have thought that, you know, there's, supposed, there's good ghosts and there's bad ghosts, so you'd expect at least some interactions to be menacing or have that threatening vibe. They don't. Even the big bad ghosty, you know, the, the, the big bad in this, the most that they do is throw a tantrum and chuck a couple of tables about. That's it. They have a hissy fit and then storm out. That does not an evil entity make. No. Now with all this previous criticism, you might be surprised that I give this book two stars instead of just one. And the reason for that is some parts of it are written really well. There's a social media aspect in this that about these ghost hunters that want to get famous at any cost. And that character is written really well. He is despicable and sleazy and written very, very well. And he just fades away. He doesn't even get a comeuppance. I would have at least liked a ghost to, you know, drag him down to the depths of hell and eat his soul. But no. And the other thing it deals with, because Rayleigh is the only survivor, she deals a lot with survivor guilt. And that is in only the, like the first first part of this because then it just gets forgotten. It just seems to get forgotten about. It's like the writer forgot about it completely and then remembered at the end. I thought, oh yeah, we were supposed to do that. Whoops. But where it is written, right at the beginning, it is quite well. Um, yeah, so this book, it came out last September. It is not a debut novel, which you'd think it would be, with given the state of it. It is the first one she wrote, and it was rejected a few times before it got caught up to be a publisher, after she'd already published a few other ones. I can see why it was rejected. I'd reject it. Because it's build. I like horror. If anybody who's watched this channel and done some of the book reviews, I like horror. The more psychological disturbing, the better. And this is billed as being cross between a horror and a thriller. And I found it to be neither. It's not even close to horror or thriller or it just because it's got ghosts in it does not a horror make. I think if I'd have read this when I was like 12, 13, I might have liked it a bit better. But I mean, I was already reading Stephen King by then, so probably not. But it isn't billed as a children's, it isn't billed as a young adult book. It's billed as a adult horror. And it's not. The things in this have been done a lot, lot more by a lot, lot better. So yeah, this is my review of this subscription book. It will be going on my to sell pile, which is down there. It will be going up on eBay to, because it's not staying on my bookshelf. It's not taking up the space of a book that I would like a lot more. And yes, I have gaps on my bookshelf, but this isn't staying on it. So if you've had a book that, I mean, so what do you think? Do you think that reviews should be only three stars and higher? Or do you think it should have that honesty where if you don't like it, you should be able to shout it from the rooftops that you don't like it and why you don't like it? So like not just don't like, I don't like it just because of I don't like, I mean, you can don't like it for don't like it's sake. If you don't like the cover, then don't read the book. You know, I, but I liked the cover. I mean, it's got two, what's not to like? But, no, just, 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 I want to read a damn good horror this year. And I've got some really, I've read some really, really good gothic ones, but I want horror. You know, I want to be disturbed. That's what I want. Disturb me. You know, D. D. Disturb me. It has nothing to do with books. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do not forget to subscribe because it all helps in the algorithm and helps get me out there. Unless you, of course, want to lock me up for having a review that is under three stars. <laughs>